VS Codium actually has the ability to look pretty damn sweet, especially when customized with not that many settings. As you can see here, this is with just tweaking a couple of settings, possibly under 10. And as you can see, it looks more minimal than pretty much any other editor out there. And not just that, but it being VS Codium, you also have access to pretty much any of the different functions that VS Code would normally have, whether that be the plethora of different extensions that you could possibly have, or whether that be access to a workspace that you can operate in something like an ADE, something like an IDE's projects. Okay, all of that, all of the functions of VS Code are still accessible, whilst it looks pretty damn beautiful to show off in your screenshots. Now, by default, it's not going to look this way. So here's what we're going to do. I am going to, first of all, open this config. Okay, let's just go to config. And then here, I will move the thing. I'm just going to copy this and I will rename it to VS Codium dot back dot back. So basically what this is going to do is just completely undo the settings that VS Codium is supposed to have. And that's going to give us a blank slate to work with. And guess what? That blank slate is going to look something like this. Now, seems like still a couple of things remain from the past setup that I just shown you. Like, for example, that would be the icons that I've installed the icons along with a bunch of different themes, but not to worry, that is something that I will walk you through and show you how you can set up for yourself as well. So by default, the zoom is going to be 100%. Now this would be 110, this would be 125. So to make things clearer and to improve font rendering, I'm just going to increase the zoom to 125%. Okay, now that we're done with that, let's start with the cleanup. So first thing we're going to want to do is first of all, just get rid of all of these different badges that we're not going to use at all. Okay, so get rid of all these badges, make sure to hide everything that you're not going to use. So inside of the Explorer, just hide everything here. Okay, now inside of the extensions, make sure to hide recommended. Okay, now if you don't have any extensions installed, by default, what's going to happen is you're not going to be able to hide this recommended section here. So my suggestion is that you start get start getting a bunch of different extensions that you can install. Like one, for example, would be Vim. So if you're comfortable using Vim, hold on, yeah. So if you're comfortable using Vim, then you can install the Vim extension, which will allow you to make your editor into basically a Vim text editor, but then with VS Codium's other features as well. So you can get that extension. And apart from that, also make sure to get the icons. So material icon theme is one such icon theme that you can use. And you set that by typing in icons. So material icons, activate icon theme, just hit that. And that's going to change your icons for you. Perfect. Okay, now after this, you want to install the product icons as well. The product icons are going to change the way that certain different icons in the sidebar and in your status bar look, for example. Okay, so you're going to want to get that next. And after that, as you can see here, okay, just a little hint for you, there are quite a lot of themes that I've installed over here. Okay, now your task, what you need to do is make sure to install a bunch of themes that you would like as well. Okay, so for example, I've chosen Cappuccino, and the way that I've configured themes for VS Code is I can choose any theme, okay, that I want to inside of a custom theme switcher. And what happens is the VS Code theme also gets updated to that theme. Let's say, for example, let's keep index.html open. And let's say I change the theme to something like Everforest. As you can see over here, the system that I've set up in order to handle the theme switching does all of this for me. So I don't have to type in Control Shift P and then change theme. Theme, I don't have to go into preferences color theme and then change anything myself, right? All of it is handled by config files and symlinks, which seems to be pretty nice. Okay. And by the way, if you want to learn how to make a custom theme switcher like this one, as well as learn how to make VS Code minimal, just like whatever I showed you at the starting of the video, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out Hyper Accelerator. It's a program where I teach you exactly how you can write the configs and the different systems that make up a custom theme switcher like this one. So in fact, it's better if I just show you. As you can see here, it's over 10 hours of video training, okay, where I teach you exactly what you're supposed to do from click this button to write this line of code. And not just that, I don't just give you the different part of the setup and then ask you to figure it out yourself. I explain every single part of it so that in case something breaks or in case you want to update it or in case you want to do more stuff like extend the functionality of your setup, you can do that as well. And that is, is exactly why I've prepared slides like these at the start of every single lesson, okay, every single thing that video you can see here. 
Not just that, I also explain the code part of this custom theme switcher sometime here at the end. Okay, about an hour and 40 minutes in. So if you want something like this, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out the program. Now, let's get back to purifying VS Code of all of this. And by the way, if I say VS Code or VS Codium, it all means the same thing, okay? VS Codium is just VS Code, but with the telemetry removed. Now, let's do this. Next thing you want to do is type Control Shift P and make sure to get rid of the status bar. Okay, you want to change toggle status bar visibility. So you press that, and then that's going to get rid of the status bar for you. And also make sure to hide all of these things. Now, unless you have the Vero theme extension installed, you're not going to be seeing that button. But regardless, make sure to hide every single button you can see here, including the minimap. You can also toggle the minimap like so. And you can also get rid of breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs are these little things that allow you to navigate between different parts of a file, for example, or different. Yeah, that's it. Breadcrumbs. Next thing you want to do is mess with the title bar. So go to the settings. Inside the settings, look for title bar. Now in title bar, custom title bar visibility, you want to set that to, hold on. Okay, we'll leave this for now. But title bar style, this is what we want to change. So you want to change this to native. And as soon as you do that, you're going to press restart. And that's going to restart it for you. Okay, as you can see, this is what it looks like. Now custom title bar most likely refers to this title bar thingy that you see here. This absolute really there you are we can just press never for this thing and it's going to hide it for us now as for the menu bar the menu bar gets in the way of it looking minimal so we're just going to get rid of that turn off menu bar alt focus so that when you press the alt key to switch between one file or the other okay the menu bar doesn't get in the way you can also disable the menu bar mnemonics and also turn off the menu bar entirely and there you go we're pretty much almost there we just have a couple more things to customize and that would be like so. So first of all, it's going to be the font family. So we'll just change the font to something like JetBrains. You know what? No, that font is overused. Let's use something like Geist Mono. Geist Mono Nerd Font Propo. And by the way, there is another thing that you're supposed to do with nerd fonts. Okay, instead of... Here's a pro tip, actually. Yeah, this is the pro tip. Instead of just using a nerd font inside of your code editor, okay, instead of using the plain nerd font, make sure to add in Propo. When you add Propo, it uses the proportional variant of the font, which basically means that any icons, any nerd font icons that you have to be displayed inside of the editor, they're going to display properly, and then they're not going to be off-centered, and you won't have to mess around with getting them to look right. Okay, make sure to use that. And if you want to know more about this specific feature, I've made a video on it. Probably it's 5 to 10 minutes long, so you can check that out. And apart from that, as you can see, the font has been changed. That's fantastic. And that's it. There's a couple more things we can customize, that being the margin, or rather the padding. So the padding, okay, controls the amount of space between the bottom edge of the editor and the last line, and same thing, but inverted or vice versa for the top. So for the top, it's actually changed 0 to 15. They really give the editor some breathing room here. We can even change that to 20 if we were feeling adventurous. And there you go, looks good. Now you can do the same thing for bottom, okay? Let's just copy this and paste it again so that we have something to scroll through. Okay, we'll just paste. Okay, now, as you can see, there's not that much of a difference that you can see, but if we add a bottom padding as well, something like 20 pixels, there should be a bottom padding that is noticeable here too. So we'll just leave it like that for now. After that, we have the cursor. Just look for smooth and wherever you can enable smooth stuff, just enable it, okay? So enable smooth scrolling, that's going to enable this fantastic feature that allows you to scroll smoothly. Okay, after that, we have smooth carrot animation. This is like the animation that you see in Kitty, which can be configured to get a smooth carrot animation like this as you flick around between different parts of the setup, of the file rather. Okay, then smooth scrolling, control that, turn it on as well. Smooth scrolling, yes. Cursor blinking, choose this to be smooth as well. And that is what gives you this crispy, creamy little animation whenever the file okay, has been opened and your cursor is open inside of the file. You can choose different variants of the blinking thing. You can have it phase. Phase is basically the smooth thing, but a bit faster if you so prefer. You have expand, which looks like this. Expand looks kind of fun. And you have solid if you just wanted to stay stuck there. But we'll go with smooth for now.
and scroll back, this is nothing much, so we'll just leave that be. And that is pretty much it. That is how you can configure VS Code or VS Codium to look exactly as it did at the start. Minimal, pretty, slick, neat, and clean. One last thing that you can do is get rid of any other buttons that you see here. If you want, you can get rid of the activity bar, really just focus in on one thing. So you can turn on activity bar, hide activity bar, gets rid of that. You can also get rid of this run code thing. This is code runner. So if you don't have the extension installed, you're not going to be seeing that anyway. And that's it. This is exactly what we saw at the beginning of the video. As you can see, I did it right in front of your eyes and got the same exact setup. That's it. That is how you can customize VS Codium or VS Code to look as pretty as this. Also, if you want to learn how to make a custom theme switcher like this one, where all you have to do is just press a single button and then just watch the entirety of the rest of your setup adapt to any theme that you so choose, okay? Like for example, okay, it's much better if I just show you inside of here. No, I would not like to update, so get out. HTOP, let's just run HTOP in here. Looks kind of cool, right? Looks amazing. Let's put this to the side. Now, watch. I'll change it to something like Nord. And as you can see, the update is pretty much instantaneous. Lightning fast update so that you can do this sort of stuff. If you wanted to change the wallpaper, you can do that as well. There's a transition between the theme changing and wallpaper changing. It's different so that you can tell what exactly has been changed. All that sort of stuff I teach you how to implement and don't just give you the DOS files and ask you to figure it out yourself. So if you want that, go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out the program. If you liked the video, hit like. If you loved it and want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Stay rising. Mwah.